Hi guys, my name is Mark. I'm studying engineering at Trinity College Dublin, and we are going to tackle question three from the higher level physics paper um, from the year of 2020. This question is on the topic of waves, specifically sound waves, and um, it's worth a total of 40 marks, as this is just part of the experimental section, so all the questions are worth 40 marks. And um, yeah, let's get started on the question. So in question three, this is a fairly standard um, waves question. There's, you know, this is probably the easier one personally I find to get. Uh, we're given several lengths L here and we're also told um, several fundamental frequencies F and we get given this big table down here at the bottom and as always you're just kind of expected to answer a few theory questions and then a maths question based on this. Um, one quick thing I'll just say you might want to notice here is that this table is actually in uh, hertz and centimeters so the important thing is that hertz is the SI unit for um, frequency uh, but centimeters is not the SI unit for length. So we need to convert that to the SI unit for length, which is in fact the meter. Obviously, converting these, the way to do this is just divide by um, 100, and that's how we're going to go from these centimeters to meters. So when you're kind of doing your calculations, uh, you might want to convert these um, at the start of the question or as you're doing it. Um, but I always just find it easier to do it um, at the start so you don't get kind of mixed up. But um, yeah. That's just kind of a quick note on that. So let's get straight into part one. In part I, we are asked to draw a label diagram of how the apparatus was um, arranged in this experiment. So this is just a straightforward kind of um, theory thing. You just have to kind of remember the diagram. Um, and yeah, I've just drawn it out here. So we'll just uh, have a quick look at it and all the important parts that you need to label. So here we have our um, diagram, and I've just written in a few labels. Um, obviously, this asks for a label diagram, so you need to have your labels, a very important part. Um, but um, the most important labels you have written down here, so what we have is our tuning fork up at the top. You strike this to generate the um, sound waves. And uh, Another thing we have is this air column, which is the dotted um, line. It's the uh, length kind of of the air column. So in this case, it'd be the length from the water uh, surface to the top of the resonance tube. And we also have the clamp. So the clamp is this thing down here. Clamp is just kind of a way of changing the height of the resonance tube um, in the water, um, you know, because you might be doing different measurements. So it's just kind of a way of adjusting the length of the air column. And uh, this part of the question was worth a total of nine marks. And the breakdown was as follows. You got three marks for writing down the um, air column and the tuning fork. So in this case, you just have three marks. Uh, you got another three marks for a, writing down any kind of way of raising or lowering the um, resonance tube. So in this case, we're using this clamp on the arm, or should I say on the retort stand. And um, finally, you just got a general three marks for just the correct arrangement. So just write this here, general uh, three marks are correctly arranged the diagram as shown. So yeah, nice, easy nine marks to pick up just from a diagram. In part two, we are asked, how did the student determine the, um, the length of the air column at a particular frequency? So the important thing here is this is just another um, kind of standard theory question that you'll learn by doing the experiment or just kind of reading up on it. And it goes as follows. What you want to do is hold a vibrating tuning fork over the air column and adjust the length of the air column until a loud sound is heard. So just to give you a bit of clarification, if you're wondering what the loud sound is, this is where resonance occurs. So just write this down here in case um, you wrote it down kind of differently. But um, yeah, the key parts of uh, this part here were the uh, vibrating um, tuning fork um, over the air column uh, and as well as this um, changing the length, or in this case, I use the word adjust. So adjusting the length of the air column until a loud sound is heard. So the loud sound also is very important because this is, as I was saying, the point where resonance occurs. Um, this was worth a total of six marks and the breakdown was as follows. You got three marks for saying that you need to hold the vibrating tuning fork over the air column. So three marks kind of for this front section, this top half of the answer. And finally got another three marks for the bottom half where we were talking about adjusting the length of the air column um, so that resonance or loud sound is heard. So three marks here. In part three, we are asked, um, how did the student ensure that the fundamental frequency and key part of this question is not an overtone was observed? So in this case, we're just kind of being asked, how do we make sure that we're hearing the original note and uh, the original frequency, should I say, and not um, kind of an integer multiple of it as we go up. And I've drawn a little diagram here, so we'll take a quick look at it just to kind of hopefully give you a better of an insight, because I always find this part of ways a little difficult to understand. So what you want to do here is you want to start with a small length and um, gradually 
increase it until you hear another uh, loud sound. So in this case, the first loud sound. And as I was saying earlier, this is our point of resonance. Um, and on the right here, we have this kind of diagram. So we have our two tuning forks here up at the top. And you want to strike these and creates these um, waves. So uh, these uh, purple columns uh, here, these are our um, resonance tubes. And um, what's happening here is when we start with a low column and we strike the um, tuning fork, um, well, you'll hear a noise, but it won't be that loud. And that's because no resonance is occurring. Um, and as you gradually increase it, what you'll find is you'll reach the first point of resonance. Uh, and that's seen over here on the right. And this is kind of what is going on inside the uh, resonance tube. This um, dotted or broken purple line kind of shows the... Um, the wave as it travels down the resonance tube at the fundamental frequency. So the key part, as I was saying, is that you want to start with a small length, just have it over here, I'll underline it again, just to, um, kind of showing how important it is. You want to start with a small length and gradually increase it until we hear this point of resonance, because that's the point where we have, um, we reach the, we find the fundamental frequency. And if you start with like a longer length, um, you might get uh, an overtone so by starting with the lowest length and gradually increasing it you'll get the first one and as you continue to increase it you get further points of uh, resonance which are your overtones so yeah this question was worth a total of three marks so not a lot of marks going for this because it's kind of a difficult one um, and the three marks were just kind of for this definition and um, kind of in general over here so Three marks are going for um, starting with a small length and increasing it gradually until you hear resonance or the first loud sound. Um, and you, the diagram in this case isn't necessary, but I just thought it would be kind of helpful to explain um, what's happening in when you're, you know, increasing the length of the resonance tube or the air column, should I say. In part four, we are asked to draw a graph of um, frequency or F against one over the length. Um, and this is just kind of a standard graph and the normal rules apply to when you're drawing physics graphs, which is, you know, the presentation of it, making sure you label your axes um, and your line of best fit as well. So let's just, you know, slowly take our way through. So here on the right, we have this table. And what I've just simply done is taken our data given to us at the start. So uh, at the top of it up here, we have um, our frequency. And I haven't changed anything here because the frequency was given to us in our SI units um, of hertz. Uh, as well as this, we are also given our length at the top of the question. Uh, we're told to plot um, F uh, versus uh, 1 over our length, so 1 over L. Um, so obviously, you need to take all the lengths and take the reciprocal of them. Um, but another important thing to know is that all of these numbers here, so just to kind of give you a thing, all of these numbers are in uh, meters. So, and it's one over that, if that makes sense. So you're taking the reciprocal of it measured in meters. So what you want to do first is convert all of your lengths from centimeters to meters, and then take one over them. And that gives you your um, table of values we see up here. And you're going to use this to plot your um, graph here that we see on the left. Now, important things to note, important things to note about this graph is our um, axes. So on the y axis, we have our frequency measured in hertz. Yet again, very important that you include your unit. And on the x axis here, we have one over our length, which in this case is going to be um, measured in per meters or meters to the power of minus one. The reason for that is because um, if it was just a length, it'd be just meters. But because it's one over meters, it means we have m to the minus one or you could write one over m as well. Yet again, obviously very important to include your um, measurement or your unit, should I say. Uh, when plotting your graph, all I've simply done is taken um, one value for frequency. So, for example, I've taken this set of values here and the 250 hertz frequency would go on the y-axis and one over length 2.94, in this case, would go on the x and just plotted the point. Uh, I just circle them because it helps me see them when I'm doing it, but that's not necessary in the exam. Um, and this line here in our purple is our line of best fit and the um, importance of that is just kind of trying to get a line as close to all the points as possible. In this case, we see it runs to the origin, which is a good thing. And it might, you know, usually they tend to ask questions on that later. Um, but yeah, and um, this is kind of a straightforward um, graph question. This question is worth a total of 12 marks, or should I say this part is worth a total of 12 marks. Um, you got uh, three marks for doing uh, this table up the top, so converting all of your measurements into um, the ones that you need. So in this case, converting your length to centimeters, or sorry, centimeters, and then taking one over that to get your um, all your points here. 
you got another three marks for having your uh, labeled axes. So three marks for having your labeled axes, including your um, units, in this case, hertz for frequency. And you got another three marks for correctly plotting all these points. So there are six points in this instance. And um, you get those six points from your six pieces of data given to us at the top of the question. And um, finally, you got three marks for our line of best fit here in purple, um, which we just said went through the origin. And um, yeah, that was kind of the breakdown of the marks for this part. In part five, we were asked to calculate the slope of our graph. So whenever you see slope, I remember when I was doing, whenever I see slope, you got to think there's a formula there to find your slope. And if you can't remember off the top of your head, uh, you might be able to remember for maths. If you can't remember off the top of your head, always, always go straight to your log tables because uh, there's no point in losing marks and just kind of misremembering a very, um, you know, commonly used formula. So uh, just to cover your bases, go straight to your log tables. So going to the coordinate geometry section of our log tables, we find here the formula to find the slope of a line. And it's given as m, or the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Important thing to know is because we have two y's and two x's, it means we need two points um, along our line to find the uh, slope. So obviously, going back to our question, we need to have two points. But um, yeah, this is our formula, so we can just take that straight over to our question. So now I'm just going to write down our formula for our slope. So m is going to equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And as I was saying earlier, that means we need two points along our graph to um, find the slope. First things first, um, I always find one of the easiest points to use is the origin. In this case, we see that the graph goes through the origin, so we can use it. And the origin obviously has a coordinates of uh, 0, 0. So that means that if we plug that into our formula, it makes it a lot easier because, you know, the one set of the coordinates will just disappear so it's just a bit easier to use and that means all we have to do now is pick out another point along the graph so here i'm just going to write down um point one is going to have coordinates of zero zero and now all we have to do is determine another point along our line that we can use and um, i always find it easy to just to look at the graph paper that you're using so in this case the the graph the grid here i have and you want to just determine a nice place with the be line of best fit cuts um, at an easy uh, kind of area to uh, identify so you don't like lose marks um, splitting hairs over like boxes and that type of thing. So here I'm going to pick a point just about there. Actually, I'll mark it in blue so it's a bit easier to see. So this point here, reason I'm picking this point um, is because it kind of falls along a nice intersection of boxes so I can use that easily to find what I'm looking for. Uh, now I'm just going to draw a dotted line going down to our X and Y axes purely just because it's a little bit easier to um, write down or find the number that we're looking for. So in this case, it's between three and five uh, on our um, X axis and it's between 300 and 400 on our Y axis. So it's a little easier to determine. So the um, coordinates of this is going to be um, probably about four and 350. And that means that we can just write this down. So it's going to be point number two. And it's going to have coordinates of, uh, oops, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I write the y coordinate first. It's going to be uh, 4 and 350. And um, yet again, just a thing I, I've always gotten used to is just labeling um, x1, y1, x2, y2. Because sometimes I, yet again, will just make little little uh, substitution mistakes and you end up losing marks, which is uh, just a careless way to do it. So x1, y1, x2, and y2. That's just an x just to make sure. So yeah, all we have to do now is sub this into our formula. So coming back to our formula we had at the start, what we're going to do is slowly sub in what we know. So for y2, we're going to sub in 350 minus y1, which is 0. And on the bottom, we're going to have x2, which is 4 minus 0 as well. So this just kind of simplifies to 350 over 4. And all you have to do is simply just plug this into your calculator nice and handy, and you will get a slope. So plugging that into our calculator, I get a slope of 87.5. And um, just the important thing to note here is that you might get a slope that's slightly different because you drew your line of best fit and uh, maybe slightly different or you picked a different point that was a little bit more, you know, one way or the other. And you might get a, a slope that's slightly different. But as long as the slope is anywhere kind of around 85, um, you're all right. You have a little bit of wiggle room on either side. So um, not too bad. This question is worth a total of six marks and the breakdown goes as follows. You got two marks for correctly writing down your formula for a slope. So nice, easy two marks to pick up by just writing something out of your log tables. And um, you got another two marks for correctly substituting two points from the line onto the graph. So two 
marks there for just correctly substituting it in. And um, finally, got another two marks for getting an answer that is um, in the round 85 in this case. So 87.5 should be fine. And you might get slightly below or slightly above 85, but anything in the round is okay. In part six, we are asked to hence or otherwise calculate the speed of sound in air. So whenever you see hence, um, it's like kind of like an indicator that you can use information that you've already found in an earlier part. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do in this case. Um, the speed of sound, the kind of the speed of a wave is defined or kind of found by using the formula V is equal to F lambda, where F is our frequency and lambda is our um, wavelength. As always, this formula can be found in your log tables in the um, wave section, along with um, formulas on kind of the Doppler effect and stuff like that. Um, what we've already found, though, and this is kind of where the hence part comes into it, is earlier on we plotted um, F versus uh, 1 over L. And what we already know is that we found the slope of that. Now, the slope of this in this instance is going to be m is equal to we said it was 87.5 and that means that that's going to equal to f divided by 1 over l which if you rearrange um, correctly it means we have f times l so what we've done now is we know that f times l is going to equal to 87 and you might be kind of asking yourself, how is this useful to us? But we also know another key bit of information. And this is that um, the length of the uh, air column in this case is going to equal to lambda over four. And where we're getting that from is um, when we look at the fundamental frequency and we look at the wave inside of the resonance tube, we see that the length of it is actually only one quarter of the total um, wavelength. So that's where we get this kind of piece of information from. Um, and just subs, uh, rearranging, should I say, and multiplying across by four, what we say is, what we find is we say that lambda is going to equal to four times L. So um, making a wee bit more progress here. But this always kind of comes back to this original formula that we had here, because as always, we were asked to find the speed of sound in air. And um, we can use all the bits that we've just kind of defined here to find that. So what this basically means is uh, V is going to equal to F. So um, as we said, this would be 87.5 divided by L. All I'm doing is just rearranging that to get F on its own. And lambda, so lambda would be 4 times L. And um, this on the bottom, we'll cancel with this on the top. So we're just going to get uh, V is going to equal to 87.5 times four and just simply substituting that into your calculator you should get a answer so by substituting that into our calculator we're going to find that the speed of sound or v is going to equal to 350 meters per second and um, just a key thing to note here is that you might get a slightly different answer and uh, with a bit of variation this is because we're using um, our slope here which we determined earlier and obviously as I was saying back then you might get a slightly different slope depending on your line of best fit or the points that you picked so that's completely fine uh, as long as it's anything in and around 340 you should be okay so in this case I believe we're okay. And um, this question was worth a total of four marks. So um, not a lot of marks going for this because, uh, I mean, I always find this probably one of the more difficult parts of waves because this type of theory is just you being able to remember kind of the shape of the wave in the resonance tube. That's how you get this. Um, L is equal to lambda over four. But the breakdown of the marks goes as follows. You got two marks for writing down or identifying the formula for the speed of the wave. So V equals F lambda. And you got another two marks for uh, getting your answer at the end. So this was, um, get we, in this case, we got 350, but anything in and around 340 should be fine. So you might get a bit below or a bit above. Um, but yeah, these are where the marks come from in this question.